Did you get that hat from Captain Crunch, Uncle Peter? Don't they teach history in school anymore? This is the distinctive tricorn hat of the Revolutionary Redcoat. Those are the bad guys. In 1781, 80 Americans were slaughtered by the British at Fort Greenwood. Right, so that would make you the bad guy. It's that damn Connecticut Business League nonsense. Your father wanted no part of it. It's not nonsense. It's a reverence for history. We're going to reenact the massacre of Fort Greenwood. All the newbies start as red coach. Takes years to become a minute man. So you work your way up and your reward is uh, getting massacred? Uh, so, we about ready for that test run? Uh-uh. Why do we need a burglar alarm? What makes you think it's a burglar alarm? Perhaps the masked robber emblazoned across this gentleman's back? It's not a burglar alarm. Sure it is. One hell of a good one. Uh, it was my understanding you have some kind of stalker problem. We have a stalker? No, no, we, we don't have a stalker, and this isn't a burglar alarm. It's a, a home security system. What's the difference? If I am to tow the party line, I'd like to learn the party line. Well, besides keeping out intruders, which we're not concerned about, could you please explain to my already anxious daughter what this home security system is going to do? Right, yes, I get it, okay. You see, Lauren, it'll give advance warning of fire, lightning, rats, radon gas, carbon monoxide poisoning, toxic mold. They make poisonous mold? The idea was to alleviate fears. Also, flood, infestation, or anything that might, you know, crawl up through the drains. Something could crawl through the drain? Mm. Oh, there was a case in Florida recently where a boa constrictor came right up through the toilet. Okay, okay. Are you ready for that test? If I could have the prime user here at the interface sector. The homeowner? You bought the house. I'm a tenant. You step up to the outer space vector. Please enter an easily remembered but obscure alphanumeric code. Now, the system is armed. If there is a compromise to the integrity of the system... Like a giant snake crawling up the toilet. Grandma. The alarm will be triggered. If the alarm is not canceled by using the code within 25 seconds, there will be an armed response mobilization. Um, wonderful! Fabulous! Make it stop! I can't do that! What, what do you mean you can't? He doesn't know the code! Write that code down for me, won't you, Amy? Simpson, tell me in your own words what happened. I didn't even want to go out that night, but Alan thought we needed to spend some quality time together without the baby, so... We'd used her before, and there was never any problem. By her, you're referring to the defendant, Lynette Landers? Yes. How old was Franny when she died? Coming up on a year. Objection, Your Honor. Look, we were at the movies. We got a phone call from the police telling us to come home. God. When we got there, Franny was dead. The police said she killed Franny. She shook her. They said, you killed my child. I did not. I tried to save her. Your Honor. Okay, we're going to break for lunch. Mr. and Mrs. Stimson, I, I am very sorry for your loss, and uh, I won't belittle it by saying that I understand. But we're going to have to get through this following the dictates of the law. So I'm going to ask you to compose yourselves, and I'm going to require that composure throughout this trial. Thank you. Judge Gray, I have to confer with my lawyer. I was wondering if he'll be meeting your chambers at lunch. No, no, feel free. I want Ms. Knox to get your job back permanently. Thank you. And then go far, far away. <laughs>
So, who's she, the cops? Uh, no, Mr. Callahan, I'm a social worker. Why is she here? One of Tina's teachers has uh, reported suspicious bruising. On my arms, because that's from, uh, because I play soccer. Uh, the, the bruise that I'm referring to would be on your back. May I see your back, Tina? Does she need a warrant or something? She doesn't need a warrant, Grandpa. She's not from the police. I'd like to see your back, please. Ouch. Thank you. It's, it's just the two of you living here? Is that correct? I took over raising her eight years ago after her parents were killed. Do you have a boyfriend, Tina? No, he doesn't allow me. I have to know the origin of the bruise on your back. She told you, soccer. All right. Uh, thank you for your cooperation. Show a little class here to the door. Nice to meet you, Mr. Callahan. I need you to come and see me at this address. Why? I believe you know why. I want to hit him hard right off the bat, knock him off balance. Walker v. Tate, pow, Bailey v. United States, TKO off manager v. Rhode Island. They're bleeding on the floor, then I stomp on them with the SB346, HB102, and SB481. You're leading with precedent and policy? It's the Connecticut Supreme Court. I'm going to jam both down their throats. What? You're the big constitutional expert. Don't forget that. Who got your job back for you? I did. It's just that what you're arguing against here is systemic racism. I'm aware. I came to you, as you may recall. You said it didn't exist. Racism is an emotional topic. Emotion is subjective. Legal precedent is abstract and objective. These guys want abstract. They live objective. I spend eight hours a day with a judge. I think I know what makes them tick. You know what makes this one tick. Gives her office up to you. My guess is you know more than what makes her tick. If you didn't come here to ask my opinion, why'd you come at all? Be polite. Keep you in the loop. Don't make me regret it. So you don't recommend the turkey sandwich? <laughs> Marshal Wilkins. Oh, no. A Amy, please. I'm here to apologize. I asked you to stay away from me and my family. There's been a misunderstanding. Is there a problem, Judge Gray? Uh, no. Yes, this gentleman has no business in the courthouse. He's uh, harassing me. No, sir. <laughs> Amy, I, I just want... I'm so sorry. I just want to apologize. Please, I'm trying really hard. Don't be angry at me. Traffic violation, Judge Gray. He has legit business in the courthouse. Well, I have an ongoing problem with this individual. It's a misunderstanding. He has broken into my home. He has left me messages and suggestive notes. Well, if you just let me apologize and explain... I'll show you where you should be, sir. I, I know where I should be. Just five minutes, please. You stay away from me, Mr. Lopdell. And if you don't, I will obtain a restraining order and put you in jail. See Dr. Redeker. Dr. Redeker doesn't see pharmaceutical reps. No, I'm not a salesman. Well, I am, but I'm not here today to sell pharmaceuticals. Though, if you could provide me with a contact name, I'd appreciate Why it. Why are you here? I have an interview for a residence position I would like to cancel. Great. You're kind of long in the tooth to be a resident anyway. Where's Dr. Redeker? Busy in Bach. And why are you postponing? I'm not postponing. I'm canceling. You probably wouldn't have gotten the job anyway. What is with the superior attitude? This is everybody's last stop before giving up medicine to go into chiropractic. It's the worst teaching hospital in Connecticut. 
Is that why you're canceling? Meet Dr. Erica. No, I'm canceling. As you know from my resume, I'm a recovering drug addict. I've already been through a ton of these interviews, so we both know that you're not going to risk giving me a position here. Plus, I already have a very good job now, so why waste your time? Are you sober today? Yeah. Will you be sober tomorrow? That's my intention. Good, then I'll see you tomorrow. Why? Because I'll decide what's a waste of time. The typical injuries in shaken baby syndrome include swelling of the brain, retinal bleeding, and bleeding in the area surrounding the brain. And Dr. Norwood, did you find evidence of these injuries when you conducted the autopsy on Francis Stimson? Yes, I, I did. And it's your opinion that these injuries caused Francis Stimson's death? Francis Stimson died of hypoxia caused by broken blood vessels in the brain. Shaken baby syndrome is my diagnosis. Those are my questions, Your Honor. Is it not true that hypoxia can be caused by an impact injury? There were no contusions to suggest an impact injury. How do you explain the fact that Frances Stimson bled from her brainstem? Well, bleeding from the brainstem is unusual in shaken baby syndrome. It's true, but we... Common in impact injuries, say from a fall. More common, certainly. Consistent with my client's contention that Franny fell from her crib onto a thick carpet. Yes, but... Now, Dr. Norwood, in shaken baby syndrome, there is retinal hemorrhaging, correct? Yes. And it has a distinctive flame shape. Typically. Can retinal hemorrhaging result from the application of CPR? Well, CPR produces what we call pin dot retinal hemorrhages. Did you find retinal hemorrhaging in Francis Stemson? Yes. How would you characterize the shape? Irregular. Uh, splotchy. In short, the kind of hemorrhage you might expect to find if a 15-year-old girl performed CPR on a baby who had suffered a head injury and stopped breathing. Objection, Your Honor. Narrative. Sustained. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm done. What does Kyle want? He uh, was a little mysterious about that. Forgiveness. He wants forgiveness. What did he do? Grandma's angry at him for giving up his Teen Harbor job and taking a fat cat yuppie job. Are you mad at him for that? Of course not. Grandma, you pinned my pants to my sock. The Syntec 3000? Isn't that a little bit of overkill? Not in my opinion. Does anyone else feel the urge to shout one if by land, two if by sea? Peter was made a minute man. I thought you were a newbie redcoat. I know. It's kind of a miracle. No one has ever skipped redcoat and gone straight to Minuteman before. Jillian thinks it has something to do with the engagement announcement. I wasn't going to say that. What engagement announcement? It doesn't have anything to do with the engagement announcement. Did you ever think people are just beginning to appreciate my quiet march of success? Oh, no. Cool. How did this happen? He asked you. You said yes. You can't very well keep something like this quiet. It could be the biggest social event of the year. After the massacre of Fort Greenwood. And you think it's a coincidence that you are given this big honor on the very day this announcement appears in the paper? It is a coincidence. Isn't it, Amy? You? Well, I don't know, Peter. It usually takes more than a minute to become a minute man. Is it impossible to fathom that people might want to get to know me? I can't tell you all how uncomfortable it makes me for you to capitalize on Jared's name. I'm capitalizing on the name Peter Gray. I've been running gray and gray all by myself for years. I haven't needed the great Jared Duff yet. <laughs> I come over here thinking you'll be happy for me, but instead you imply I'm some blood-sucking gold digger. I'm leaving now, Mother. I'm sorry. Enter the kill code and then push this on. My timing good, Maxine? As good as ever. What do you think of this? It's an overblown guest guzzling status symbol designed for a weak personality with manhood issues. And um, I will not co-sign a loan for it if that's why you're here. No. No, Aunt Max. That's my company car. I pick it up tomorrow. <laughs> it's ludicrous. Yes. But since I am no longer paying for a car or gas... 
four checks uh, for uh, five hundred dollars each. I got a little behind on the rent. I want to pay you back. They're post dated. Well, give me a break. I've only been at it a couple of weeks, but symbolically, I wanted to give you the whole amount. In a week or a month, when you walk out on this job, too, you're going to be obliged to stop payment on these. What do you mean? I am great at sales. You were great at Teen Harbor. I left to move up to do better. What is wrong with making a life? Do we all have to live in the muck just because you have for thirty years? I love you, Kyle, but you're flighty. And when you come and ask me, please not to cash these checks, I hope that you remember Teen Harbor, symbolically. Amy's heating up a pizza. Would you like some? You sound just like my father. <laughs> no, that's just mean. Why? You're exactly like him. You don't want anyone to grow or to do better because as long as they stay small, you get to be the matriarch. So you don't want pizza. Hey. What are you doing here? Can we wish you luck? I don't need luck. I've got God and history on my side. What do I need luck for? You are a difficult person. I'm in warrior mode. You might like me better if I weren't in warrior mode, but this is the way I have to be here today, doing what I do. I don't expect you to understand. What do you mean? You don't know me. I'm just another number to you, a demographic. Whose fault is that? I come to you, a black man looking for ammunition to fight a good fight, a good fight. And you barely give me the time of day. You've buried yourself so far down, all you can think about are the roles you play. I'm a good father. I'm a good employee. I'm a good citizen. There's worse things to be. There's better things to be, too. What the hell made you like this? I apologize. I'm sorry. I guess I'm nervous. That's hard to believe. I've never done this before. Argued in front of the Supreme Court. You certainly implied otherwise. I apologize for being snappish. I confided in you, and now you want to argue about it? Miss Knox, you're up next. Y yes, thank you. Zola. I was in high school. What? You're going to confide in me now? Before I have to go in to address the state Supreme Court? My uncle worked at a used car lot. He let me drive a Buick for a date. Now, this was a fine girl, somebody I had big feelings for. Naturally, I got pulled over. White cops. They ruined the car looking for drugs. Made me take off my pants. Humiliated me in front of my date. You need details? I know the details. I decided right then to carry myself in a manner which would not allow for humiliation. You became invisible. That's not how I see it. Miss Knox, justice is ready for you. Go be a part of history. You gotta know I mean it when I say good luck. Your turn, Miss Callahan. Okay, so I'm here. Thank you for coming, Tina. Do you need something to drink? No, um, is this gonna take long? Because my gramps is waiting for me at home. How's your back? Uh, fine. Doesn't hurt. Well, I'm sure that's not true. Having a cane broken over your back must be quite painful. He didn't break it over my back. I broke it. Later. I stuck it between the refrigerator and the wall and I kicked it. Why did he strike you? Your grandfather is a pretty tough old man. He used to be a boxer in the Navy. There's no way I could hurt him. Not really. Have you tried to hurt him? There's yelling. That's all. Yelling. Yelling is one thing. But if we well, get into it sometimes, I guess. Irish, you know? 
I'll tell you what I think. I think that it's very hard work taking care of an old person, even for an adult. And it's not fair for a 15-year-old girl to have to do it. I love him. Of course you do. Mostly we take care of each other. It's just that... It's just that... Sometimes... <laughs> Families can be complicated sometimes. Don't look like a doctor. He looked like a salesman. Has the interview started? I'm interested to know why St. Michael's was your last choice. <laughs> Honestly? You're underfunded. No matter what my specialty, you'd have me doing everything all the time. You have a reputation for getting very low-level applicants. The hospital may not be in existence in another year. And most of your equipment wouldn't pass muster in downtown Russia. What do you think is wrong with this? Is that a trick question? Oh, I'd say frostbite, a stasis ulcer, and some kind of secondary infection. How would you treat it? First, I'd wash it. Not get a nurse to do it? No, I'd wash it myself, get a good look, send out some labs. Looks like there's some, uh, looks like there's some dead tissue that needs debreeding. Maybe an ultrasound to rule out a blood clot. Sounds good to me. Have you ever had your ass removed from a sling by a nurse? My first year of residency, I had a nurse prevent me from sending a man into insulin shock, which counts, I suppose, as having my ass removed from a sling. Of course, she was sleeping with me at the time, so she owed me. That probably wouldn't be an issue with you, but who knows, right? Are you going to ask me any real questions? How would you treat intestinal pinworm? I, I believe it's treatable with pyrantal pamoate. Are you going to ask me real questions that aren't nauseating? Because my specialty is neurosurgery. Antibiotic ointment, light gauze, vancomycin, IV drip. Take him upstairs. I like you. You're jaunty. You be good, Gus. Is this for real? I have a few questions about trauma, if you don't mind. So, how'd it go? Hard to say. It's not like they applaud or anything. They ask questions, which could be taken as a good sign. Were you persuasive? I'm always persuasive. Whether they were persuaded is another matter. Oh, it's like talking to Mount Rushmore in there. So how long before they rule? They could take hours, days, weeks. And... Tell you what, I'll give you a call. You'll call me? Do you want me to call you? If you want to call me, yeah. I like it if you call me. I took your advice. I went with emotion, so if this all turns to crap, it'll be your fault. I was on the phone talking to my friend Candace, and I heard a thump from upstairs, so I hung up. Um, I went upstairs, and, and it was... It, it, take, take your time. baby was lying on the carpet next to the crib and it wasn't breathing but I know CPR but it, it didn't work so I called 911 then I went back upstairs and I did CPR until the ambulance came Miss Landers did you ever shake Franny no I never did that never thank you your honor cross Miss Patterson so how long were you on the phone with your friend Candace I don't know. Maybe ten minutes. What do you make of Candace Gallagher's contention that she heard Francis crying right before you hung up? Objection, Your Honor. Candace Gallagher said she might have heard a baby crying. I'll allow it. No, there was no crying. Just the thump. Well, Candace said that she heard crying. And then you uttered a profanity. And then you said, and I quote, There it goes again. I'm going crazy. Then you hung up. But I, I didn't mean anything by that. Let's talk about what really happened that night, Lynette. 
You were on the phone with your friend. Francis started crying. No. She wouldn't stop crying, so you interrupted your phone call, and you went upstairs, and you shook her to make her no. stop, didn't you? Your Honor. And then you realized that you'd gone too far, so you called 911 in a panic, but by then it was too late, wasn't it? Your Honor. Okay, Miss Patterson, that's enough. Yes, Your Honor, no more questions. Well, I have some. Did you like Franny Stimson? What do you mean? We babysat for her a few times. What was she like? Like nothing. A baby. I'm interested because you, you keep referring to Franny as it, not by name or her. I guess because... Because, oh... After she was dead, it was like... It wasn't like a person. How did it feel to see her lying on the ground, not breathing? How do you think I felt? I was scared. I mean, here's this little baby not breathing. People are going to think I did something to it. Her. No, look what happened. Everybody thinks I did something bad. I didn't. I tried to save her. Why are you asking me all these questions? I tried to save her. Isn't that all that matters? What matters is why Franny needed saving in the first place. You cannot stay up until 11 o'clock. Because it's a school night. I, I know, but... Hey, sweetheart, can we talk about it when I get home? Yeah, uh, t tell Grandma I'm coming home in, in about 20 minutes, okay? Okay, love you. Bye. Give me my keys or I'm going to scream. Yes, please, tell me this. One minute. I, I, I'm, I'm picking up your files, okay? That's all. I'm trying to help you here. Look, if I scare you, just press your panic button. Someone will come. Here. Do you remember why you put me in jail? It was because I said fires. Remember? In court. I watched you. When they talked about the fires, I could see... Like I disappointed you. You looked into my eyes when you spoke to me. We had a connection. I could see that you really cared about what happened to me. I'm reluctant to give up on Jason Lopel. He's been abandoned by his parents, by the foster system, by everyone who's ever borne any responsibility to him. He's a victim, and he deserves our compassion. He defiled every picture of me in that album. I'm an idiot. I do stupid things. I scare people. I blamed you. I now know it was the system that kept us apart. I thought the words you said to me meant you cared for me. I now realize that I bent it all out of shame. Anyway, I, I just wanted to say thank you, and I'm sorry. Judge Gray. I got here as quickly as I could. This is the last you'll see of me. Goodbye. If you apply to the Department of Social Services, the state will make available to you several programs. Meals on Wheels, medical checkups, a weekly visit from a nurse, free transportation to a senior citizen center for recreation. It's welfare. It's all welfare. Forget it. We don't need any help. For example, I can't help but notice that your cane is broken. You could have that replaced. Fixed it. It's fine. 
a single grandparent on a veteran's pension, raising a teenage child alone would certainly qualify for many benefits. Are you deaf? We don't want any welfare. You were in the service. A Navy man for 25 years. You're ashamed. I understand that. We make ends meet. There's no shame in that. No, sir. I'm uh, referring to the feeling of helplessness you have when your granddaughter abuses you. You get off my porch. A Navy man. A Korean War veteran reduced to fighting a child. But I think the thing you're most ashamed of is hitting her back. You struck your grandchild with your cane, sir. For that alone, I am empowered by the state to remove her. But that would mean that she goes into the foster system. And I'm afraid that would break her heart and yours. Because I believe despite your problems, you love one another. It'll never happen again. I give you my promise. She can beat me senseless. I will never lift a hand against her again. Mr. Callahan, I don't know how it starts or who hits who first. I, I honestly can't tell. But I do know that you need to set aside your pride and allow us to help you and your granddaughter. You want me to sign that paper? Yes, sir. Asking for charity galls me, do you understand that? It galls me to the bitter end. Mr. Callahan, you serve this country. There's no charity here. Whatever we can give back to you, you have more than earned. You will. Thank you. Good day. Dr. Redeker, good morning. I'm glad you decided to meet with me. I have some very exciting news about generic pharmaceuticals. I don't talk to salesmen. I'm offering you a residency position. When can you start? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I, I've been to eight of these and nobody... You're offering me a job? You attended Harvard as an undergrad and you graduated fifth in your class from Johns Hopkins. And then took drugs and nearly killed somebody. You're not on drugs now. You're in the program. But I have a job, a, a very high-paying job as a pharmaceutical rep. Well, that's almost like being a doctor, I guess. Did you call my references? I don't care about your references. In fact, I don't care if I have to fire you in the first week. Because next year, when we start looking for our new batch of interns, I can put a little line in our brochure that says St. Mike's, the choice of Harvard and Johns Hopkins. I'm going to turn this heap into a respected medical center, and you're going to help me. You mean my pedigree will help you? You know something about the diseases of the homeless, and Horatio likes your attitude towards nurses. I did call some of the other medical centers that turned you down, and not one of them said they turned you down because you were a bad doctor. I know why they turned me down. I don't care about the drugs. I'm not going to give you a key to the medicine cabinet, and if I find you stoned, I won't merely fire you. I'll call the cops. Well, obviously, you'll be the world's most understanding boss. <sighs> Dr. McCarty, I'm officially offering you the opportunity to be a physician here at St. Mike's. Give me your answer by tomorrow noon. One day, that's fast. Yeah, can't be good. Gotta be bad. My mistake was going with the visceral emotional stuff instead of policy. What you are is a bad influence. You're not a woman who needs a lot of oxygen, are you? It's Knox. There's my guy. Wish me luck. You don't need luck. You have history and God and whatever else. You want the good news or the bad news? Bad. They found for us. Which gives me a precedent to argue to the federal Supreme Court, which will make my mama extremely happy and proud. That's good news. I asked for the bad first. Well, since you have such a brilliant attorney, you'll probably get your job back permanently. Is there any bad news? I don't think it's so great for you and your judge to be together, but that's just my personal opinion. Stop worrying about my boss. Yeah? Absolutely. Prove it. I want a big, thick steak to celebrate, and you're buying. Then you don't want to spend any more time with me than you have to. 
Look, big man, it's a victory. Don't make me regret trying to include you in on it. Y you know what? Forget I asked. You just go home and shine your head. <laughs> Whoa! What, you gonna walk off? I'll take you for a damn steak. But I'll drive. Because you're the type who'll leave a man to stand at the side okay. of the road. Pick me up. The, the prosecution says Lynette Landers shook Francis Stimson to death. Mr. Reimers said that Lynette found Francis Stimson injured on the floor and uh, tried to save her life. Both could be true. Or maybe the truth lies somewhere in the middle, that Lynette did both. She shook Francis Stimson and then performed CPR. I don't know. Ms. Landers, only you know the truth of what really happened. And my concern for you is this. If you are responsible for Francis Stimson's death, it is a weight that you will carry your entire life. You'll break under the load. Your Honor. Is there anything you'd like to say? Your Honor, you cannot ask my client to incriminate herself. Mr. Reimers, you have conducted a brilliant defense. Now be so kind as to remain quiet. I didn't do it. Okay. Well, what I do know is this. Uh, legally speaking, the prosecution has not met the burden of proof, so I have no choice but to find Lynette Landers not guilty of the crime of manslaughter against Francine Stimson. Your Honor, I know she did it. I can't prove it, but I know this girl killed my daughter. I know it in my heart. Please, don't let her get away with it. I beg you. Mrs. Stimson, I cannot use your, your instincts to make this decision. I don't have that luxury. I am sorry I cannot provide you and your husband the resolution you, you so desperately need to, to begin to mend your broken hearts. My baby is dead. And she did it. And you're not going to do a damn thing about it. I am truly sorry for your loss. We're adjourned. again I uh, thought about what you said and I decided not to capitalize on Jared's name it's twisted thanks I want to apologize no mom you were right I would never want to hold my children back you know that of course you know I'd pull out of this all together if it weren't for dad your dad didn't want anything to do with the Connecticut Business League no mom I didn't want anything to do with him. Really? I, I wasn't aware. Why do you think I'm so keen? All these corporate mucky mucks? Dad was a small independent insurance broker and they shunned him. Well, this country was built on independence. So this one's for the old man. How do I look? You look fantabulous. Thank you, little missy. Mother? It's very, very, very large. And blue. <laughs> what do you want from me? Nothing. All I have to do is get the keys and drive her off the lot. Except? There's no except. Except I got another job offer. As a resident. 
but it's the worst possible situation. It's a crappy facility in a medical backwater, and they only want me for my resume. <laughs> I know, it's not funny. You think I should take the residency? You don't need my permission. Well, you're telling me to blow off a second chance at a career I gave up hope for two years ago? I didn't say anything like that. Why are you hollering at me? Because, be because I am this close to having a job where I make decent money, where I can live alone in an apartment like an adult and not room with a, with a Donna. I mean, do you know how much a resident makes? Could I offer an observation? You're going to tell me that no matter what I choose, it's going to be stressful, and then I'm going to be tempted back to the dark side, but if I work the program, the world is my oyster. Wow. I'm good at this. Who said being your sponsor would be a thankless job? My aunt told me that I would flake on this sales job. I'd really hate for her to be right. First and foremost, you must be a good nephew. That's the most important thing. Why can't I? I, I'm, I like sales. I'm good at it. I enjoyed making a... I enjoyed making a living wage. I'll give you two a moment alone. We could have been great together. Guess what? What? My mother's here. Mom! What are you doing out here? We are enjoying the evening air. We're, we're afraid of the alarm. Well, you gotta get used to it. How was your day, dear? Sometimes I think I'm the worst judging tonight I get. Look, you have an excellent reputation. You never told me that. Yes, and I apologize. I, apparently, I hold my children back, and I'm going to try to do better. I forgot the code. It, it's 031093, sweetie. It's your birthday. Go, 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 go. Okay, I got it. I hate that machine. Well, I know it's a hassle, but at least once we're inside, we know we're safe. Coming up next on TNT's Prime Time in the Daytime, detectives suspect a more violent crime when an infant goes missing. Solve the case with Law and Order next on.